What is our differential diagnosis of tremor? This is a good overview. You see somebody with tremor, well, the first thing you tend to think of is, okay, is it hormonal metabolic hyperthyroidism? I see one to two hyperthyroid tremors. Recently, we've had a spate of them. People have scheduled and canceled the appointment um, a couple of weeks out, say, oh, I got diagnosed with hyperthyroid. Okay, go get treated and come back if you have, still have tremor. So hyperthyroidism, medication-induced tremors, many, many causes. Lithium we talked about, stimulants we talked about yesterday, dopamine receptor blocking agents. Asthma, SSRIs or multiple SSRIs, SNRIs. Then of course there's Parkinson's, essential tremor. There's also cerebellar lesions in the setting of a neurodegenerative disorder. Anxiety will provoke tremors. So lots of different options for tremor. So I tend to think of it as, okay, do we have a neurological diagnosis for tremor? Do we have medications? Is this thyroid? Is this caffeine? Is it something else? So we do a quick review for everything for people with kind of what I call tremor NOS. So let's talk about diagnosis first and treatment second. So diagnosis, we've got the DAT scan. DAT scan is normal. It was approved, remember, just to recap, approved for ET versus PD. It's also used for diagnosis of Lewy body dementia now in the population that has cognitive impairment. If you get a DAT scan, it's normal. It's not. If you get a scan, it's positive. So the DAT scan is helpful in either way, depending on how you're looking at it. If you're trying to get Parkinson's as a rule in diagnosis, then it's a confirmatory test. When it's normal, all that it tells you, it's not in the Parkinson's family, okay? What else is based on your clinical judgment? In this case, my differential was Parkinson's versus, idiopathic Parkinson's versus drug-induced. So it's A or B for me. I've set up that choices. What's the anatomical basis behind it? Let's touch on that. You see the portion on the left-hand side, that's the brainstem slice called a substantia nigra. It's that neuromelanin spot that you see up top is normal. Underneath is what you see in the Parkinson's brain. It's been bleached out. The cells have dropped out. The microscopic portion of normal cells and the dropout of the cells. And on the right-hand side, you see the all-infamous Lewy body that you see in Parkinson's. And that's something that's important. Parkinson's is a Lewy body disorder. Lewy bodies are an aggregate of alpha-synuclein. And so this is what you're seeing. When you look back at this, the two commas, that is the midbrain projecting. Those are the feet of those neurons projecting onto the to basal ganglia. It is really cool science that I can visualize anatomy in a physiological manner, specifically a pathway. It still blows my mind. It's been 10 years. I still look at it and say, wow, I can see, we can see that today. So here you go. This is what you're seeing. If I see neurodegenerative, I'm gonna see an abnormal scan. If I see a normal one, it is by definition a postsynaptic blockade, therefore a normal scan. So, <clears throat> well, there's some conflicting medications. If you're interested, I don't expect you guys to order DAT scans, but if you are curious, many of the medications are psychiatric, so there's a section seven on the DAT scan label, lists off all the medications. Some of them need to be stopped, not all of them do. Some of the SNRIs need to be stopped for a certain amount of time. We give them that list when we show that to them. I usually put up the list, I do a med check and say, this is your meds, these are the meds that need to be stopped. 90% of the scans, I don't have to stop anything. 90% of the scans. Obviously, they shouldn't be on cocaine when they do that. That is one that you cannot be on. <clears throat> so you can get a false, neg false scan if you do that. So just, just caution patients about it. Most of the people I get DAT scans are in their, 50, they're in their 60s, 70s anyway. But, and they kind of look at me exactly the way you guys looked at me about this. It's a purely diagnostic test. We need to remember that. Interpretation, well, it is like any other test. It is open to interpretation. There's an alternate method that has some benefits and negatives, like any other test. It's a SIN1 test, it's a biopsy test. Some of your neurologists might be doing that. It's a way to identify tissue. And remember the adage in medicine, labs and imaging beat clinical, because or they reassure clinical, tissue beats imaging. Tissue beats imaging, tissue is tissue. You got ha tissue in your hands. This looks for the evidence of phosphorylated synuclein in the nerve cells, but it's only specific if it's present for the alpha-synuclein disorders or Lewy body disorders, and that's that list.